Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to look at the inclusion-exclusion principle, but mainly exactly and at least M conditions. So we're going to use the S notation. So S0 means zero elements or zero conditions satisfying. S1 means the number of elements satisfied by or one condition. So well, I'm going to give you the formulas and then we'll talk a little bit about how we can derive them, but not that important. So exactly m is going to be sm minus m plus 1 choose 1, sm plus 1, plus m plus 2 choose 2, sm plus 2, and that's just going to keep alternating on and on until you hit the last condition. So the top and the bottom for these chooses are just going up by 1, if that helps you learn this a little bit easier. Uh, the least M conditions are very similar. So we start out with SM, then we subtract M choose 1, SM plus 1, then we add M plus 1 choose 2, SM plus 2, and this just goes on and on just like the first one. So it follows the same pattern except this M here is always one less than the number of conditions we're looking at. So you're saying, okay, hold on, why does this work? This is crazy talk. Where does this come from? Well, you can prove it through backwards induction very nicely. And I'm not going to do the full proof, but I'm going to show you what you can start to do it yourself, if you're interested in. So when we say exactly I conditions are being met, what we're really saying is that we have at least I conditions being met and we subtract at least i plus 1 conditions. So in sort of a diagram here, if we have i here and we have i plus 1, if we want at least i, then we have everything above here. But if we want at least i plus 1, then what we have here and we subtract the two is just this spot remaining in between, which happens to be all the scenarios where only i conditions are being met. So this is how we get exactly i. So hopefully that diagram helps. Um, should be kind of intuitive that exactly is at least i minus at least i plus 1. So kind of like how if we did at most 1. So if we want exactly 2, we could do at most 2 and then subtract all the points where there is at most 1. And all you'd be left is the situations where there's exactly two. So is there a point, and this is a question, where exactly I conditions is the same as at, at least I conditions? Now think about this. If we need to do an inductive proof, and we kind of already have the inductive step here, this is sort of our base case. So we need to start somewhere. So where are we going to start? Well, if exactly i is equal to at least i, that means that at this i here, there's nothing above i. So this has to be when there's only i conditions. So this is essentially at the very last point, or at the most number of conditions it can be. So if you have t total conditions, then et is equal to lt, if there's only t conditions. So that's kind of important for the inductive proof, but again, we're not going to do this, so you could easily just add up all of these li's minus l i plus 1, and you could eventually get exactly. What's more important probably for your course is doing some example problems. Yay, so let's do some example problems. Here we have the word arrangement, and we want to know how many ways can we get exactly two pairs of consecutive letters, and at least three pairs of consecutive letters. So let's do what we always do, and arrange these letters. A R R A N G E M E, N, T. 
Okay. So there's four pairs of consecutive letters here. So we'll label condition C1 is that the AA is together. C2 is the RR. C3 is NN. And C4 will be EE. Okay, well now we can get our S0. So S0 is going to be the number of ways to arrange all of the letters. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 11 factorial over 2 factorial to the power of 4, because we have 4 pairs of 2. Our S1 is going to be 10 factorial divided by 2 factorial to the power of 3, and this is going to be multiplied by 4 choose 1. So what we did here was we said, okay, we're just going to let AA be its own letter, and RR, N, N, G, so on and so forth for the rest, and we'll just order those. But because we're looking at all the cases with one condition, we're just going to choose one out of the four conditions to be met. So that'll multiply it by the amount of different ways we can do this. So that's S1. S2 will follow a similar pattern. So that's going to be 9 factorial over 2 factorial squared times 4 choose 2. S3 will be 8 factorial over 2 factorial times 4 choose 3. And of course, S4 will just be 7 factorial. Okay, so we want exactly two pairs of consecutive letters. Well, we already have our S's here, so we just need to figure out the formula. So exactly two is the same as S2 minus three choose one S3 plus four choose two S4 minus five choose three S5. We don't have an S5, so I didn't even need to go that far. So that's exactly two. And I could plug in the numbers and come up with an answer, but it's I have them written right here, so we're not going to bother plugging them in. Now if we want at least three pairs, then we want L3, which is going to be L S3 minus three choose one S4. Kind of interesting. They look, they look pretty similar. I will give you that. And if we want to take a look at our formulas here, just to make sure we are consistent, this is your formula. So for exactly m, we have sm minus m plus 1 choose 1, sm plus 1. If we take a look here, that means that if we have exactly 2, we should have s2 minus 3 choose 1 s3. And if we have L3, we know that this top portion here is going to be one less than the number of conditions we're satisfying. So just tricky details for the formula, not necessarily that important for you to know why, but probably good if you can prove it through induction by yourself. Once, once you're able to do that, this section does not really become a challenge because the proof that exactly M conditions has that formula, and at least M conditions has that formula, is probably the hardest thing you could do with these questions, honestly. So these are your two answers to having exactly two pairs of consecutive letters, and at least three pairs. Kind of cool. So here's another way. We have 10 prizes to give to four different students, but we want only two students to get prizes. So what we want is exactly two. And right now we know this is S2 minus three choose one S3 plus four choose two S4. So let's figure out what S2 is. Well, S2 is the number of ways that we give 10 prizes to only two students. Okay, so we're going to choose two students out of the four to get the prizes. 
and then we're going to distribute the 10 prizes between those two students. So that's going to be 2 to the 10, because each prize will go to student A or student B. Okay, for S3, now we'll just choose 3 out of the 4 students to not get prizes, and all those prizes will be distributed to one student. S4, well, we'll choose four out of four students to get no prizes, and then each prize has zero options, so just zero to the ten. So this last thing can't actually happen. Okay, so now what we can do is we can just plug our values of S2 and S3, and we'll get our answer here. So again, the inclusion-exclusion part in the previous videos is a lot more important than this section, because this you're just taking the old stuff and fitting it into a formula. That's it. We'll do uh, one more here. I, I like probability questions. I think it's good to go back and take new concepts and kind of tie it into the old stuff. So we'll do a probability question here. We're going to deal 13 cards from a 52 card deck. And what is the probability of having at least one card from each suit? So that's one heart, one diamond, one club, and one spade. Okay, well, we're going to let C1 be the case where we have no diamonds. C2 is going to be the case where we have no hearts. C3 will do no clubs. It's a very difficult to draw. And C4 will be where we have no spades. Okay, well, for our total, which we'll just call S0, it's just 52 to choose 13 cards, because we don't have any restrictions, so we're just picking 13 cards. With S1, we need not one of any of these suits, so we're going to choose one of the conditions to be met. And if we have no diamonds, what that really means is we only have 39 cards to choose from. So it's going to be 39 choose 13. If we have no hearts, then we'd take out the 13 hearts and we choose the 13 from the remaining 39. So if we have one condition that's being met, it'll be 4 choose 1 times 39 choose 13. If we have two conditions being met, then we're going to choose two of these conditions. And if we're choosing two of these conditions, then we're going to get no diamonds and no hearts, for instance. So we're taking out 26 possible cards we can pick from. So that just leaves 26 choose 13 cards left. Okay, and S3 is just going to be 4 choose 3, and all the cards are going to have to come from the suit that is remaining. Okay, so here's kind of the tricky part. In the question it says at least one card from each suit. And you might be thinking, okay, so we want to use L1 there. That would be wrong, because what we're doing here is we're actually just using the regular old inclusion-exclusion principle. So we want the case where there's not any of these conditions being satisfied. So this is really just N of C1 bar, C2 bar, C3 bar, C4 bar, because we want at least one from each suit. So we know this is just equal to S0 minus S1 plus S2 minus S3. I should mention S4 is not possible because then we couldn't choose any cards. Now, because this is probability, we have to divide by the total amount of options, which is just S0. So that would be the total number of ways we can draw cards. So more specifically, this S0 is just going to be 52 choose 13, because that's all the possible ways we can do it. So this is your probability here of at least one card from each suit. Now, if we alter this a little bit and we say, no, we want exactly two void suits. 
Well, we had our conditions before, where C1 is no diamond, C2 is no heart, C3 is no clubs, and C4 is no spades. So we can say, okay, we want exactly two void suits. Well, exactly two of those conditions are going to be met then. And that's going to be S2 minus 3 choose 1 S3. And we don't have an S4, so that's as far as we need to go. But because this is a probability, it's E2 over S0. So this is going to be S2 minus 3 choose 1 S3 over S0. Because, of course, this is the probability. Anyways, that was at least and exactly. Um, I have a discrete math to midterm one on the web on trevtutor.com. If you look in the discrete math two section, there is a midterm with solutions. And you can write that if you want. It's still got one more topic on it we haven't discussed, but it does cover another exactly at least question. So you should probably check that out if you want practice. If not, that's totally okay. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And I'll get to those as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, share with your friends. If they need help and this helps you, it's probably going to help them. So definitely share the knowledge. All right. See you guys next time for the last topic for the midterm, which will be derangements.